Joe. Howdy, Mrs. Riggs. Land sakes! <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure look fine, Mother Riggs. It's a long time since I've seen you. <laughs> you know, you always was a great hand to wander. Yeah, I ramble around. <laughs> and how are the little twins? Little? My land! Them girls has grown since you seen them last. No. <laughs> they in the house? Mildred is. Elise went down to watch the boat come in. I reckon I'll saunter in and surprise Mildred. Oh, you sure will surprise them. <laughs> well, Brick, I sure <laughs> am glad to see you. Well, you certainly have doubled in size since last I set eyes on you, Mildred. You just must see Elise. I'll surely see her before I leave. There's the piece of bell whistling now. Well, Miss Cameron, we'll be landing in a few minutes. Got all you outfits together? Well, everything's ready, Captain Marshall. Listen, why don't you give up this plan and, and turn back? Well, there's no place to turn back to. Why, there's a home in all the South that wouldn't welcome the daughter of Colonel Cameron. True, we can hardly become potential visitors. It's a tough proposition, girl. This pioneer life in a savage wilderness. We realize that, Captain Marshall, but we must keep the family together. Honey girl wants to stay with the sister Ruth, doesn't she? And our brother Dave's almost a man grown. Ruth is right, Captain. The Cameron tribe must stick together. Say, you used to fellow I want to see. I want to play some more of that shell game. Have you got any more money? Oh, sure I got some money. When did you get that? From my mother-in-law. She lent it to me, but she don't know it. <laughs> Here, I'll meet you below deck. Get along. Don't forget, I wait there for you. Are you still determined to be a sturdy pioneer? Quite determined, Mr. Thorpe. I told you about my plantation in Louisiana. It must be wonderful. Miss Cameron, those lands and servants are yours. If you'll take me with you. Oh, I do thank you, but as I've said before, it's, it's quite impossible. Goodbye, Mr. Thorpe. Now, I pay you and I'm going to keep it. But if I lose, I give my mother-in-law half. <laughs> Come on, in the afternoon. Here we are again. Hello, Tom. Well, Gussie, you want to see the elusive little ball under the show. There you are. Now it's bound to be under one of them. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now we'll shuffle them just a little bit, just to confuse you and take your choice. <clears throat> now, may they show you? Here, I bet you two dollars. Two dollars, cover. They always do that for good luck. <laughs> Now, they show you. Now, watch. <laughs> ah, you see, Gussie, the hand is faster than the eye. Better luck next time. Oh, here. Who wants to buy my mother in law stocking? Scott! Oh, there you are. What do you mean by spending my money? By Mama. I'm going to give you this. Give me my money. Give it to her. Hurry up. Give me the rest of it. Why, madam, that's my own money. That's my money. No, no, Mama. That's his money. Captain, I demand that that man give me my money. Hand it over. See, Mama? Didn't they tell you we would win? Oh, you big loafer. Get out of here. Spending my life's earnings. Now, Thorpe, you get off my boat. If you set foot on it again, I'll put you in irons and land you at St. Charles on my way back. <laughs> You take 
good care of the baby. I will. I'll be right back, honey girl. yourself on this lady. Is that how it seems to you? How else can I take it? It's nothing to me how you take it. But it matters a heap to me, ma'am, how you understand. Perhaps not. But if it concerns Miss Cameron, I'll demand an explanation. You will? Then speak your piece. Mr. Stockwell, will, will you please take me to my brother? With pleasure. I'll be looking for you shortly. Well, I won't be hard to locate. Girl. Thank you so much, Mr. Soss. Great pleasure. Just think this wagon will be your home for the next six months. And after that, the cabin in the wilderness. My mind is made up, Mr. Soss. We're going with the settlers. You know my brother David? Yeah. Hello, Dave. How do you? <laughs> Howdy, boy. Hello, Zeke. Howdy, Bill. <laughs> hey, Tech. I've been telling about this here boy, Coleman. He can heave a knife into a mark so big every time. I'll bet you Buffalo Hide you can't heave and let post back at him. Call the bet. Now, uh, here, show him, boy. Bless now, wild heart. Oh, I've seen him do it a hundred times, eh, Bill? That's another buffalo hide you owe me, Tex. You remember, Bill, that time up uh, on the Snake River? Oh, oh, I did. Hey, boy, <laughs> I want to know about old Ben Grizzle. I hear the Indians downed him. Only it wasn't Indians downed him. How? Oh. The Renegade Whites done it. How oh, come? He's been wolfing all winter. Yeah? Must have had two, three thousand dollars worth of wolf pelts. Oh, easy, Ben. 
He was hacked up and stuck full arrow. Looked like engine work, all right. The wolf pelt was gone. If ever I find them hellhounds, I'll sure make them hunt their holes. No, but who's that young buck over there? There's no hair on his face. That, uh, Brett Coleman. He's very quick with his knife. Mm -hmm. Where does he come from? He come from the plains, the mountains. He lived with the Indians. He can throw a knife through the heart in 20 feet. He's the best shot in all this country. He knows everything. You know too much for his own good someday. Le conocen hasta en México. Uh, Vamos a tomarnos un trago. Uh, ¿Quieres comer? All right. If old Ben had lived, he'd be going on about 72 now, wouldn't he? Engines never done this. It was renegade white. And they've left their mark. <laughs> Say, Zeke, who was that he grizzly that just went by? Well, that's Red Flack. He's bullwhacking for Wellmore. He's going to whack Wellmore string. Cheers, good order. You reckon you'll ever find out who downed old Ben? Just possible that a certain low-down coyote left his sign there. Hello, Coleman. Howdy, Wellmore. Change my mind. I'll scout for that bull train after all. Well, that's a ray of sunshine. Shake hands before you change your mind again. Got a good wagon boss for the trip? Red Flack. A fairly ruffian, but he can maul the toughest freighter on the plains into a pulp without even working up a sweat. He can do that, eh? Flack? Ha! <laughs> well, he likes to do it. But he can run a bull train. Here he comes now. Uh, we won't. All ready, Chad. Likely you two have met before. Uh, I reckon not. Coleman's going to scout for the train. And you understand, Flack, that he can have final say in all matters dealing with the Indians. Yes, well, who's got the final say about busting this bull train? And he understands that you're the wagon yes. boss. Another thing, another thing. Am I supposed to be witness? To them wooden head pilgrims well, crossing the plains? The more that goes along, the better it is for them and you in case the Indians jump you. Well, all right. All right. Make it clear to him that I'm wagon boss. Oh, he understands that, Frank. Seems to be a right pleasant cut. He's a ruffian, but he's a real wagon boss. Likely he is. Must have done a big trade in wolf pelts this year. Yes, we had a big trade with the wolfers. Flack sell you any of these? Flack? Oh, he didn't do any wolfing last winter, I guess. What outfit did you buy the biggest bunch from? A fellow named Lopez came in about a month ago with close on to $5,000 worth. Lopez, eh? I guess I don't know him. I signed him up as a bullwhacker on the train. You did, eh? I'll see you next year. Bring your scalp along back home. All right, goodbye. Is that so? It certainly is. I don't know whether they're going to get to When they scout for that bull train. 
good. Oh, Mr. Cameron, this is Mr. Coleman. Howdy, Mr. Coleman. How do you do, sir? Uh, he can tell you more about that country where you're going and what kind of an outfit you need than any man around here. Thanks. Wendy, uh, throw my bags in with yours and Zeke's, will you? All right, I will. Tell Zeke I'm going along. All right, boy. Mr. Coleman, would you mind looking over my outfit? Certainly not. Uh, we'll go have a peek at it. Where is it? Right over there, sir. Honey, girl, it's time for your history lesson, dear. Now, uh, how many stars in the flag? Twenty-six. How many stars? Thirty. Now, you know better than that. There's thirteen. And what do they stand for? The thirteen original colonies. Now, remember that. Now, who oh, discovered the Columbia Miss, River? Mr. Coleman, Robert this is my Gray. sister, Ruth. Honey girl, it isn't safe to be sitting in a rocking chair when there's certain persons present. I think you'll find we have everything. Plenty of guns, a rifle, and a fowling piece. How about ammunition? Plenty. One thing, I don't see any barrels. A barrel? Yeah, you'll need a water barrel. There'll be long stretches without water. Knew we'd forget something. I'll go get one. All right. What I was aiming to tell you was this. When I came into the, the ring... right next there had an extra one. Oh, uh... Quick work, son. Say, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take two barrels. Suppose you go rustle another one. I'll do that. When I came romping into the rig's cabin... How's this one? Oh, that's fine. Looks like barrels grow on trees around here. Mr. Cameron, you better tell your sister to change that pretty dress. She won't get very far in that. Yes, sir. On some traveling clothes. Have a peek around here. We have a trailer. I like him better than Mr. Thorpe. Honey girl, we'll finish your history lesson. Yes. Oh, no. Well, you want to talk. Thorpe, yeah. you get back on the peensy bell and make yourself scared. If you're here when the boat pulls out, the boys will certainly lead your pony out from under you. I had no intention of staying. I'll be on the pinky bell when she leaves. You'll see the jar. My goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Then I try again. Come on, here. Up you go, up. Oh, you stubborn yakers. I give you yap in the yo, I bet you, you young. Come on. Up. Well, hello there, Gus. What you call that thing you got there? Oh, his name is Jack. Jack? Oh, yes. But that's only a half of it. Well, see, he's only a half a horse. Well, <laughs> what's the matter? Can't you get him up? I don't know. I pull and I pull, but he won't come up. <laughs> wait, wait. I got an idea. Hey, what did you say to him then? <laughs> hey, I told him a joke about my mother-in-law. <laughs> Wait, here she comes. God, what have you got there? Oh, this, this is my new horse. I used for him. You bought him? Sure. Say, yeah. <laughs> that was the new one. That rum is for you and me, eh? Ah, yes, sir. Well, if it ain't Bill Thorpe, eh? <laughs> I'll start you was hung and planted. Yard back. No, my time ain't arrived yet, Flax. Yeah. Well, it looks as though it might be drawing close. Uh, how come? Well, I've been promised a hanging bee if I don't get out on the Pinsy Bell. And the captain promised me a necktie party if I set foot on the boat. <laughs> Case of nowhere to go. It appears to me you do your shooting by daylight with too many people looking on, eh? <laughs> well, as long as you can go and you can't stay, 
Yes, what do you figure to do about it, eh? Well, I've always been able to wiggle out. Yeah, appears to me as if you was born to be drowned. cut your mark on a tree so you won't get lost in the forest. And they taught me how to bury in in the snow so you won't freeze to death in the storm. And they taught me how to make a fire without even a flint. And they taught me how to make the best bow and arrows, too. You can teach me how to make cat poopers? <laughs> no, that's one of their own secrets. Well, boys, I guess we better get going. Oh, God, our Father, as you sit on high and look down on us poor mortals, forgive our friends. I am about to lead these people into a wild and dangerous country. Give me strength and wisdom, oh, God, to lead them through. Where's my step? Mama, I got everything packed up in the wagon. How can I get in the wagon, you idiot? So look, I sure look, Mama. Put your feet up on there. That's it. Now wait. And if that's up, you go, Mama. That's it. Now one more foot up. Now up, Mama. Up, Mama. That's it. Up. Wait, Mama. You're sitting on my head, Mama. Please, that's it. Then you go. Get in. Get in, folks. We're going. Get up. We're going now. Get in Pull up! Pull up! Give us a stop. All right, all right. Oh, God, I wouldn't let you go. Never mind. Yeah. I walk there, you do. Come on. No, Thank <laughs> you. 
Got a good bunch of bull whackers, Black. That uh, Lopez strikes me as a good hand. Uh, you bet. Lopez can pound him along. You and him old friends, eh? Oh, Lopez and me? Nah, I never seen him till he signed on this trip. My mistake. I don't like this man Bolt. Eh? If he asks after me, you tell him you never seen me till you signed on this trip. You're too late. Why? He just speak to me, and I tell him we was all friends. What? Ha! What do you use under your hair instead of brain? You need your brain. You got here. Ah, no. You're talking shit. Getting into dangerous country, Flack. 
So I'll be riding to the Pawnee villages to pick up some Indian scouts. Yes? Well, you're likely to lose your scalp out there. I'll bet you a couple of wolf pelts I bring it back with me. How long you be gone, Coleman? Three, four days, a week maybe. Well, back so soon. I thought maybe you wouldn't be coming back at all. And just why did you think that? <laughs> well, after I sort of took the dark-eyed beauty away from you, I thought you might be decamping. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thorpe. <laughs> I never quit a job in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, quite so, quite so. But after the girl quit you in the middle of the road... Say that again, Mr. Thorpe. I know who you are now. And I know why you quit the Cimarron country, too. Oh, well, no necessity to have quarrels among friends. Friends? You threw too wide a loop. Remember this. There are three of you. I'm not your friend. Yes, uh, well, you let him scare you stiff. Not at all. Only an idiot, you know, presses a quarrel when the other man has a knife pressed uh, against him. Uh, good excuse. Wolf pelts, eh? What does that mean? Don't mean nothing. It doesn't to me, but it does to you. Yeah, Mr. where'd you get that notion? When he mentioned wolf pelts, you look as though he'd rammed a knife in you. Not exactly what I'd call a poker face. Eh, well, what of it? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Only I'm beginning to understand why you don't like Coleman. Bye, Wendy. Zeke, I'll be seeing you in the happy hunting grounds, if not before. Good luck, boy. Bye. Well, Miss Ruth. I got some good news for you. What? I'm going to be away for a while. I'm going scouting. Wasn't that dangerous in the open country? Lord, no. I love it. Especially now that it's spring and everything's so happy. Why, there's trees out there, big tall pines, just a-reaching and a-reaching as if they wanted to climb right through the gates of heaven. And there's brooks, too with the water smiling all day long. But the part I like best is the night. Lying out there beneath a blanket of stars with that old moon smiling down on you. And every time you look up, there she is, sort of guarding over you, like a mother minding her young. Sometimes it's so beautiful that I just lie there, listening. Birds singing. Brooks laughing, and the wind sort of crooning through the forest, like some great organ. Oh, I've always loved it. But I reckon I'm going to be lonely this time. You know, you can get sort of used to having somebody not like you. And when they're not around, you miss them, not liking you. That's why I reckon I'm going to be lonesome. But I'll be thinking of you. Goodbye. And you just take care you don't lose your scalp. Zeke, is he leaving the train? Yes, miss. He's riding out to Pawnee Village. Well, how far are they? Oh, nigh on 100 miles. Wasn't that dangerous? Well, he's likely to lose his scalp before he gets there. But once in the villages, he's safe. So don't you worry about him, miss. What? Why should I worry about him? Uh, I don't know, miss. I don't know. But it seems like as if maybe you was. Not at all. He means nothing to me. No. No, of course not. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Steve. Oh. Hey, you got back here at last, eh? Yeah. 
plenty of buffalo sign out here. So I'll be riding out to pick up fresh meat. Yeah. Well, who's keeping you? I'll see you at the river crossing. Yeah. Hey. Lopez! Lopez! Up! In. Yeah. You two have been waiting for your chance. Here it is. Go out on a buffalo hunt. Me? Uh, nah. I kill hundreds of buffalo. Uh, Why should I go? Yeah. Get them cobwebs out of your brain. He means, Lopez, we might find better game. Watch him till he leaves the ponies, and then give it him in the back. <laughs>
in a prairie dog hole and broke his neck. Come near breaking mine, too. Were you hurt? No, I was knocked out for a spell. Here, I'll put these in your wagon and help you across. Flax said we could only use the wheelers. Flax said? What does he know about water? He never took a bath in his life. Johnny! Where's the Cameron wagon? I'll go greet the little fellow. Greet, eh? Well, Lopez and me will go greet the jug. <laughs> You take them from here on in, Dave. Shallow water. All right. Go back to my saddle. All right. Get up. Come on, Shorty. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh. I was just coming over to help you. Thank you. We had the best of help. Help? Who? The matter, Lopez, seeing if you go. Me? No, no. Drive on into the corral, Dave. All right. Get in. Come on in. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll be seeing you three later about matters and things. Boy. Howdy, Zeke. What happened? Pony stepped in a dog hole. Yeah? I suppose a prairie dog shot that hole through your saddle and into your heart. Eh? Nature. Who was gone from camp, Zeke? Flopper well, Lopez come in during the night. In the early morning, sent a wagon out for the meat. Well, uh, nice mess you made of things. Not at all. Two hundred yards running is considerable of a handicap. Besides, other days are coming. Now, don't you fool yourself. Here he is, here he is. Black. The engine's been sending up smoke signals for several days. Yes, well, I see them. 
I'll skirmish around with the Pawnees for a few miles. Well, go on. There ain't no one keeping you. No, but you'd better keep Thorpe and Lopez here. Why? I got a feeling that if either one of them leaves camp, they'll never come back. What do you mean by that? Just the way it sounded. Mm. Hey, look out. Look out, eh? Lopez, try a long shot at him. No fire. The Cheyenne. They want to palaver. Oh, they look to me as if they're out for half. They will be if we take a shot at them. That'll mean war. I'll go out and palaver with you. Go on, go on. Maybe so you don't come back. Huh? Look how clearly his horse is acting. Yeah, he's riding zigzag. That's Indian sign that he wants to palaver. There's a chief riding out to meet him now for a powwow. See? Them. I told I was going to know and I know I was an author. Wow. This is Black Elk, an old friend of mine. Do they mean peace or war? Peace, as long as they march straight through the Cheyenne country without stopping to settle. Bye. Hi. Hi. Now that we're going to be friends, they'll probably bring their families over here to beg. So feed them well and treat them right, and we'll have no trouble. What's he saying about me? He says that Colin wants you for his squaw. And he says Black or Thorpe will get you. Black or Thorpe? Why? Well, Black's got a lot of horses. Miss Ruth, you shouldn't be riding out here alone like this, away from the train. Why not? Because this is dangerous country, and anything might happen. You wouldn't care. Care? Me? Why should you care? Listen, girl. If anything happened to you, it'd be like throwing my heart to the wall. <laughs> Don't worry, it's Black Elk and some of his braves. <laughs> Common squaw. Common squaw. Were you saying that I'm your squaw? Seems like that's what he's driving at. Well, you tell him that you don't want me for your squaw. I've never told Black Elk a lie yet. He knows my tongue is straight. What? Well, what do you mean? Well, it wouldn't be true if I told him I didn't want you. It happens I do. And you've no better taste than to tell me that before all these savages. I'd tell you that in front of the whole world. This silly joke has gone far enough. Yes, sir. 
Take honey girl from here on down, Dave. A little easier going. Hold on. Hold on, now, Miss Ruth, you cling on to me. Put your arms around my neck, honey girl. A little tighter. A little tighter. Just a little tighter. care nothing about me, Z. <coughs> well, man, you can never tell how a woman feels by the way she acts. There's all riddles, all of them, and you just gotta guess them. And no matter which way you guess, you're wrong. Looks like as if the way they're putting some of them outfits over there, they're gonna lose them. Ha-ha! <laughs> what did I tell you? Let's get out of here before they get a beat on us. Zeke, did you hear that terrible crash? Hear it? I seen it. Yes? That was your wagon. Oh, oh but was my mother-in-law in it? No, she wasn't. Oh, that's too bad. What'd you say? I said I am glad. Huh? Lucky for you that I wasn't, you loafing hound. What you mean? Because I was with your wife, Sarah, and she gave birth to twins. Twins? 
Are they both mine? Both? Oh, Mama, are they boys or girls? One of each. One of each. And my Papa. <laughs> mama and my Papa. Papa and my Mama. Well, yeah. <laughs> they got two for one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's drink to the happy event. Wait a minute. There was two events. They have two drinks. Here, give me that jug. I'll take a pull at that myself. Jim. Where'd you blow in from, boy? All the way from the big river. On the... <laughs> How long are we going to camp here? Well, just as long as it takes to fix up the outfit. Bascom, you tell them pilgrims of yours there's 500 miles of desert ahead of us. And them that don't like what's coming to them, now's the time for them to turn back. I hate to see you at menial tasks. If we were only back at my old plantation in Louisiana, you'd have a dozen servants to wait on you. Let's turn back. Turn back, Mr. Soper? Oh. Why, oh, honey, girl, didn't I tell you to stay away from the fire? Yes, and you told me not to be sitting on the rocking chair when Brett Coleman is around. Hello, Coleman. Howdy, Dave. You shot these turkeys. Won't you stay and help us eat them? No, uh, I just had supper with the Bascom. Sorry, Brick. Think I'll go hunt up old Zeke. How many is that for you, Wendy? Number 84. Uh, uh, here comes 85. Hello, Zeke. Hello, Wendy. boy. I smell turkey you're cooking. All I got was a smell. Deal me a hand of them flapjacks. That's the way it's done, Gussie. My old arm's giving up. Now you try it. Well, I'll get a pail of water. That's easy. Take him to the tip. See, I saw Zeke do that till he broke his arm. Yes, and you know someday my mother-in-law is going to talk so much, she's going to break her yaw. <laughs> <laughs> Say, boy, I wouldn't let my mother-in-law boss me around like that. Stand up to her like a man. Face her down, boy. <laughs> if it was me, I'd tell her what was on my chest. You got nothing on your chest but when? <coughs> you old polecat. <laughs> I've just been talking with some trappers who come out of the Southwest. They say the country they call California is wonderful. Yes, so I've heard. Why won't you come with me to a land like that? Are you going there? If you'll come with me. But what about your plantations in Louisiana? Oh. Well, <laughs> if we like California better, uh, we could sell my holdings. 
and buy vast lands out there. Well, if, if the continent offer me all that, but it can't be. I'm going to join Davy. Oh, Dave. Dave, come over here. Black Elk here says that you and your sister were so good to him when he come in to visit that he wants to give you all them ponies. Oh, that's kind of them, Zeke, but we couldn't take their horses. Oh, of course you could. They got hundreds of ponies. He wants you to show him where to put them. Now, you go and throw them ponies in with your herd. Why, Zeke, you lying old coot. That engine's buying Cameron's sister for Coleman Squall. <laughs> well, 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 why not? Oh, Coleman find himself a squaw, eh? Dick, you old whiskered Cupid, you. <laughs> I know the very sight of you. What have I done now? You've made me the joke of the plains. Me? Who else tried to buy me like an Indian squaw? You put me to shame before them all. My girl, you're imagining things. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Zeke always told me women were damn funny. Mr. Saul, I've changed my mind. I'll go with you to California if you'll go at once. Yeah. Once? Why, yes, yes. Uh, I'll make preparations immediately. This is a fine state of affairs. This man Thorpe isn't all he claims to be. My mind is made up, Davy. We're going to California. Where's what? Hey! I just came in to tell you goodbye. Hey, goodbye? Where are you going? I'm going to take my outfit and leave you here. Hey, your outfit? All you got is one horse and two guns. No. The Cameron outfit's mine now. Oh, it is, eh? Yeah, we're going to California. So I'll bid you a fond farewell. No, you ain't. No? No. What do you suppose I grubs take you for, eh? So far, you've been a fizzle. One try, one miss. Oh, his no longer in my way. Well, he's in mine. I'll tear him down yourself. Oh, I'd like to kick him into pulp. I'd like to break him in two like that. Well, why not? Uh, I don't mind fists or feet or even a gun. It's the way he throws that knife. Well, why should I risk it? Because you're a... Uh, Dead shot. You're a going to stick. You're a going to prove how good you are before you leave the fort. And if I don't. Well, if you don't, I'll tell that little filly there's a wide open noose waiting for you in every rib of town. Ah, uh, you do your job. Before you leave the fort. Howdy, Henry. How's things, Coleman? Just fine. Say. Black Elk was telling me that all the Indians the West were gathering to keep you all from passing through. So they tell me. Black Elk and Cheyenne is going West to hold a powwow with the Shoshone. Yeah, Black Elk tells me that it's almost certain that the Cheyennes will declare war later. Likely. Old Pete Rubido was asking about you a while ago. Pete? Where is he? Camp at Spring yonder with his new squaw. I think I'll ramble down and see him. Say, Henry, will you put a new uh, cap nipple on this gun? Sure will, boy. A new uh, trigger spring in the pistol. All right. I'll leave him with you while I go see Pete. Be ready when you come back.
are about to unite this loving and devoted couple in the holy bonds of wedlock. Hank Gillis, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Abigail Vance, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> she does. <laughs> done told you that if Lopez here or Thorpe done stayed off into the brush, they weren't likely as I'll never come back. Sure, no, he made some kind of a bluff. What of it? Well, uh, Thorpe stayed out, and he ain't never coming back. Hey? No. He's done gone back to his old plantation. Yeah. Well... You won't go to California with Thorp now. Why not? He and Coleman just met in the brush, and Coleman shot him. Are you sure? I heard the shot, and I saw Coleman standing there over him. It suits me, too. So he'll even do murder. And so I pronounce you man and wife. And may peace and happiness be yours. <laughs> There's been a murder. There's been a murder. Um, a murder? Where? Where, girl? Who? Coleman met Mr. Thorpe in the brush and shot him. That's a serious yes. accusation, my girl. Are you sure? My brother saw it. Men, we can't have cold-blooded murderers among us. There's a man that shot Bill Thorpe down like a dog. Go, Pat. Go and get a rope. Get a rope. Get the rope. And just who accuses me of killing Thorpe? It, uh... It was Miss Cameron. You, eh? So you'd like to see me hang. <laughs> Listen to me, you. This boy Coleman here just couldn't have killed Thorpe. Why not? Because he didn't have no guns on him. He left his one with Dutch Henry to be fixed. <laughs> Coleman and Thorpe were out with the Cameron gal. If it wasn't Coleman, who was it who shot Thorpe? Since you're aiming to know, I'll tell you who done it. Who? I shot that skunk myself. Coleman, a friend of his men. He's lying to save his neck. What could Zeke have against a man like Thorpe? You want to know that too? Yes, I want to know that too. Well, I'm a telling you. I was camped out pretty close to you, and I heard that little powwow you had with Thorpe. Yes, what are you driving at? Just this. When a man begins to do a lot of talking about hanging... He'd better make pretty sure as to who's going to decorate the end of the rope. Get my meaning? Well, Thorpe ain't nothing to me. It's no fair of mine. That's just what I was a thinking. Uh, when Coleman ain't going to do no scouting while I'm boss of this train, I'm leaving him behind. <laughs> well, now, we're taking on a new scout. Yes, again, Flack. I started with this outfit, and I'll be with it at the finish. Who says so? I'm just telling you. I got two reasons. One is I told Wilmore I'd scout the train through. And the other is a little personal business I aim to transact at the end of the trail. See if you can figure out what that is, Flack. 
Goldman, the settlers are willing to push on. We'll follow you. What's all this talk about engines? It's true. The engines are gathering to the westward to stop us from going through. Engines have never yet prevented our breed of men from traveling into the setting sun. Go on. Lead the way. Well, get your outfits together. We're going. Never mind what you see or what you hear. Red Flack is still boss of the train. Get in line! Gotta gather them up and shove them along. Charlie died, Coleman. We raised him from a cold. Tough boy. But we gotta battle it through.
saw this. Engine sign. Hello! Like crows and giants, Zeke.
brother, our good friends have perished here at the hands of the savages. Open your arms to them and care for our loved ones until we meet again on the other shore. Amen. Well, Zeke, old Wendy's gone on another trail. You and me was, well, you and me was, uh, <clears throat> my baby, my baby, oh, my baby. <laughs> well, Zeke, I'm going to trail the engines and make sure they go back to their village. So you scout the train ahead, and I'll pick it up in a week or so. Bye, Zeke. Bye, boy.
water. Mama, I got good news for you. Oh, you're always bad news to me. Get on your long underwear, sick. Why? You're going in the snow up to your, up to your, your, way up, Mama, and hand me out my bear overcoat. Bear useless. You're going someplace you won't want to sit down. It's so cold, it'll freeze your hoof off. You wait and see. Think I'll go say howdy to the camera. This is my best overcoat. Well, I'd hate to see your worst one. <laughs> hello, Gus. Oh, hello there, Black. I'm certainly glad to see you back again. What are you wearing the heavy overcoat for? I'm getting all ready for that snow. No, we won't be there for days. Well, anyway, I'm going to keep warm while I can. Where's the camera now, Sid? Oh, we left them four or five days back. Left them? Yes, all the horses give out. They couldn't go on. Fifteen, twenty wagons. They all went back to the fort. I hated to tell you, son. See, why did you let the Camerons go? Uh -huh, not my doing, son. Black knows I savvy Injun sign, so he sends me on ahead to scout. And when I come back, they'd all drop out. If Injuns chant on them wagons, they'll kill a lot of them. I'm afraid so, Black boy. The way's clear ahead, Zeke. You scout them. Yeah. I'm going back for the Cameron. Good luck, son. Get up, Jimmy. There you sit. Get up, Jimmy. I don't know who smells the bush. Hey, hey, oh, hey, here hey. you go. some way that you'd come. I'd have been here a heap sooner if I could have. Say, Dave, you'd better cut off that trailer and throw everything into one wagon. All right. I'll hitch up old Roni and we'll see if we can get out of here. After you left, old Zeke told me the truth about some matters, Torp and Slack and all. He did, eh? Sorry, I was so stupid. Oh, don't worry, Miss Ruth. Things did look sort of queer. I should have known better. Well, we all get off on the wrong trail once in a while. We'll make it through, all right. Well, that's fixed. Can I do something, Frank? No, I guess not. You ought to overtake those settlers in a week or so. Now we've picked up the trail again. 
and nothing can stop us. Not even the snows of winter nor the peaks of the highest mountains. We're building a nation, but we've got to suffer. No great trail was ever blazed without hardship. And you've got to fight. That's life. And when you stop fighting, that's death. What are you going to do, lie down and die? No! Not in a thousand years. You're going on with me. The word is said, and we'll follow you. You're ready to start a sun up. Well, he's turned up again. I think it's his gas job, Well, he'll down the both of us. You've got to get him tonight. But they can hear a shot at night. Oh, they can't hear a knife. They all know this knife of mine. Oh. Well, here's a knife they don't know. No, no, no. I'm afraid of that knife. I know where you got it. It will get us in trouble, uh, sure. How? Because a dead man's knife is bad medicine. Here, yeah, stop that uh, dribble. Take the off. And wait for the night. Right, I have on me. Then it goes. Wait until he's bedded down. Then. Sister Ruth and my brother Dave, and make me a good girl and take care of us. Aren't you going to ask God to take care of Brett Coleman? Oh, Zeke says that Brett Coleman can take care of himself. your hand that time, Lopez. Zeke, this is old Ben Griswold's knife. Well, where'd you find it, boy? Lopez just left it sticking in my bedroom. They're having it makes it certain that Flack and Lopez did it. No question about it, boy. What did they do, Coleman? Killed my best friend. I've been on their trail ever since. That's the serious charge. You're sure? We'll call a separate meeting in the morning to try him. You can call a settler's meeting to bury him. What do you mean? That I kill my own rat. Jump camp, Zeke, and I'm off on their trail. Well, you can't leave us here. You've got to see us through. He's right, boy. Maybe it's all the way you all look at it. But those two men killed a man in cold blood, and they've got to pay. Not that I've got hatred in my heart, but that I'm the law out here, that's all. And the law is justice. Well, Zeke. I'll see him to the end of the trail. But then I'm picking up a new trail here. Under stands the great white mountain. And down below lies the valley I've told you about. Bowman, you have fulfilled our hopes. Neighbors, friends, it is fitting that we give thanks to the Almighty.
Our Father, we thank Thee for leading us to this land of promise, for guiding our footsteps safely through the dangers of our pilgrimage. In this valley of our dreams, we'll build our homes and serve Thee, O Father, and our children's children shall praise Thy name. Amen. The way is clear ahead, all gentle slopes. So drive down, my friends, and settle it. Lead the way. Zeke will lead the way down. Our trails fork here. You mean you are leaving us? There's a trail I've followed for over 3,000 miles now, and I'm heading back to pick it up again and follow it to the end. Pullman, you're the breed of man that would follow a trail to the end. Thanks, Bascom. Friends, we'll go on. Boy, there's two of them. Bag them. Now I'm going with you. No, Zeke. You stay here and look after Ruth and her outfit. Rick, you're not leaving. Yes, Miss Ruth, I'm pulling out. They say you're going to hunt down Slack and Lopez. What I aim to do. But you can't do this awful thing. Take two lives. Frontier justice. Don't go, Rick. Don't go. The job I've got to finish. Don't you see? It doesn't matter about them. I'm afraid for you. They'll kill you. You're everything in the world to me, Frank. I can't let you go. I can't. The thing has to be done. Someday, somewhere, our trails will cross again. Mustn't be a carrying on that away. He's gone. He'll never come back. Now, now, you just mustn't do this, Miss. You will have me a flubber in here pretty soon. I'm a telling you that everything is going to be all right. When spring comes in that valley, he'll be tracking back again. I know that boy. I know him. Now, come, come, come on, Miss. Get up. Yes, looks as if you're done for, Lopez. Don't go in and leave me, Black. What? Do you think I'm staying here? Then leave me, Black. Ah, uh, so don't do you no good. You'll be froze to death in an hour. Black. Hey, help me. I'll get away. Black. 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 Don't let me die. I'm old. Stay with me. Black. Get up, it's my deal. Black man, sit. Come on in. Black. Black. before you have company.
I got a hankering to trail on down into Mexico. Old Bill Gillisum told me that them mad black guys gals is just full of fire. Deke. Yeah. Deke, you're not really leaving us. Yeah, gal, I'm a pulling out. You was all nice and settled now. And this here belly's getting altogether too civilized for me. Whenever I get more than three or four families within a hundred mile of me, I begin to feel kind of crowded. That's not why you're going to be. Why else, Dell? Breck has never come back. You're going out to look for him. Now, wherever that boy Breck Coleman is at, he's a looking out for himself. Now, don't you fret about him. This is the anniversary of the, the day that the wagon train left from Missouri. The last time I had this on, I was sitting in the rigged cabin. In a rocking chair? Yes, honey girl. In a rocking chair. Reckon that's a panther. Yeah, it's a two-legged panther. The only kind would ever give me that Comanche yell as a signal. We might just as well start to unpack. What, ain't you going? No, you should go in now. He's only a bit up in the timber there, and he's headed this way. Lee, won't you stay over for the anniversary? Yes, gal, I'll stay. And I just recollected, I got a little present for you. Oh, Dick, what is it? Well, a young fellow named Brett Coleman left it with me, and he told me to give it to you in case he didn't show up. Where is it, Dick? I hid it in the hollow of the big tree at the bend of the trail. You'll find it there. Thanks, Dick. I'll go get it. 